हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो वेलकम बैक इन द लास्ट वीडियो सीरीज वी हैव डेवलप्ड वन फंक्शन वन डायनोमो डेवी फंक्शन वेर वी हैव नो एडेड डेटा टू द टेबल फ्रॉम आवर लोकल स्प्रिंग कोड एप्लीकेशन सो हियर अगेन वी आर गोइंग टू इन द वी आर गोइंग टू इंक्रीज दिस सीरीज बाय एडिंग सम मोर नो कॉन्फ़िगरेशन दैट so what i am going to do in this series let us stand here so uh, this is our spring boot application which is pushing and getting the data from the dynamo db so this is what we have done uh, in the last uh, last session now uh, what i want if uh, i want to add some function to our database for the purpose of like whatever data is getting updated or inserted i just want some notification i just want to know put some logs like yeah a record has been updated or deleted so we know that normally in database side we used to say triggers you know what triggers right if any modification is made to the database when event is get generated this is called triggers so uh, in in aws storm we call it a lambda function lambda is nothing but it's a single you know it's some it's a standalone method which is you know going to run without server so it's a kind of utility function that you want you know based on some event something should happen so uh, we are going to uh, do this part so we are going to create one trigger and then attach this to a lambda function and we deploy our build so uh, and we do the process the same i mean uh, creating of the data in spring in the dynamo db so let's understand how this flow is going on by working okay. so uh, first we'll create one lambda function in our spring boot project then uh, after creating that we will deploy this on uh, as a lambda function and uh, after that uh, we will uh, will add a trigger which will you know invoke this lambda function when anything is getting updated in our database so let's do this step by step this is the uh, dependency which is required for this so you can it's a memory dependency so you can find it out uh, on memory pejotr itself so this is not a big deal so uh, let me create one package here lambda I'll create one class lambda test so uh, i'll create one method which is a uh, First, it will, and it will take person object. Sorry, have to choose this one. Current time. Oh, oh sorry. Just give a variable. Next dot log dot log. I'm uh, just in hope. I'm just try to keep it simple. I just want to show you how this you know lambda function going to be executed. Invoked. <coughs> and I will return simply. Code is updated successfully. I mean, it's a very simple. I'm just printing some logs just to you know be, make it sure that uh, uh, something has happened when anything updating in the database, right? Now you can understand this method as like suppose when a new you know joining get the when it, when when any any you know engineer get I think, is about to join his organization so what happens the whole day his, his 
personal data is getting captured and it's getting saved in the database. Once it is saved in a database, one employee ID gets generated. You have seen this uh, many times like employee ID is generated but your email ID is not configured. Why? Because, uh, I mean, you can see that, I mean, when you are getting your uh, employee ID, but apart from that, there's a lot of things that is going to happen. I mean, your data has to be you know, modified according to the account section. Your data has to be, you know, inserted in some table where HR can access the data or uh, what a project to have been assigned that mapping somewhere in the tables. So you can understand this, all this, you know, huge case, uh, you know, Lambda functions. One Lambda function will, you know, update the table for the HR department. One Lambda function will update the information for the account section. So you can understand how it is becoming, you know, important while, while we are doing a lot of, uh, a lot of you can say jobs is running behind one event with one event right <clears throat> okay so uh so i'm creating a very simple uh, basic you know, uh, lambda test so let me build it as well because this this is what i have to do let us just let's do it here out right now So this is success and uh, jar has been created. Now let's go to the lambda function. I'll go to my dashboard. Uh, let me delete this. I'll create one function, simple. Let me give some name. Uh, my test lambda run environment will be java 8 here is very important in AWS what services you know uh, you want to use you can't use any services in AWS unless or until you are authorized to do that so this authorization you know is given by the owner of the account I mean this account may be a personal this account may be at uh, you know organization level so uh so here a uh, sense one service is going to you know do something with other service so you can understand this services as an entity so one entity is dynamo table dynamo db table and one entity is the lambda function lambda services so we have to give you have to authorize to our you know, trigger which is generated from the dynamo db table to access the lambda functions this is what we are going to create it so you can create a new even if you don't want to create that then uh, basic permission can be done but again uh, you have to test some policy in later ways so i have created this already and i have created with this name now i'll show you uh, quickly how many uh, policies are attached to this particular rule so you can create your own and you can attach this three policy one is the and amazon uh, dynamodb full access another one is aws lambda dynamodb which is very important this is a basic one i mean we have to give it at a must give and third one is aws lambda invocation dynamodb this is used by the triggers all right so let me create this function let's keep the other things default okay i'm creating this So this is done. Now uh, this function has been created. But when this function will be invoked, who is going to invoke that? So as we, as we you know decided in uh, in the very beginning that one trigger we have to create this. And this trigger will be you know generated by DynamoDB. I'll select DynamoDB. Once you select the DynamoDB, all the no tables created in Dynamo will pop up here. That is person. There is only one table. So it's URN. Uh, it's URN will be you know selected here. This uh, URN is nothing but it's a kind of new bar you know for your object. Here we are coming the best size. 
uh, I mean, in this simple scenario, what we are going to do, uh, we have we have just one lambda function and one event is generated when one turn on when any one row is getting updated in the table. But in practice practical scenario or each cases you can understand like suppose you are having one access sheet it is having more than 50,000 records so there are two ways either each and every record call the lambda function and it get executed I mean 50,000 time your you know, lambda function is going to be executed this is not a good idea so uh, what uh, it was provided it says that let's buffer some record I mean you can buffer the 100 record or 1000 record the 1000 record you got in some particular time frame you executed so by this way you have to execute a lambda version only 50 times so uh this is the best idea what, I, what we explained here uh we have to give the not uh, time frame in the second like uh, how much time we have to wait for to get the data over suppose you have given 10 second so what happened it will wait for 10 second whether it is coming thousand record is coming ten thousand record it will accommodate that this is the best size of this and it will get in updated in one go so right now i'm uh, leaving this because uh, our scenario is not like this And let's keep uh, the things as is well. So enable triggers. Now this trigger is created in our database. So this function is not receiving event from triggers. That's good. Now it's still uh, it is creating. So let's wait for some second. It's created. Now this is a runtime setting. I mean, uh, this lambda function, my test lambda, has to know like which method is it has to call when any trigger is coming us coming to us or any trigger is invoking us. So that and that thing I have to provide here. It's having some pattern. I will explain this. Uh, example is nothing but it's the name of the package. This is the class name. This is the method which is going to be executed finally so let's uh, copy this i mean for the lambda function this is my package name right this is my class name and this is my method name right let me save it so this is how we have i have given one handler to it okay whenever this handler is going to be executed when this lambda function getting invoked now uh, in function code i have to add my upload the you know, jar that i have created this can be you know, uploaded from either directly or you can upload this from a s3 bucket so this is not a big issue right now i have created this so this is coming down over the target folder okay i'll go there and upload it uh, yes this one I'll save it. Okay. So this has been uploaded. So configuration of all everything is done. Now it's time to execute it. Let me see if any table one record is here. Let me delete it. I'll keep the data fresh. This is a percent. Okay, so let me run application. This application I'm running because I have to insert data in dynamic table. So one data will be inserted, one trigger will be generated, which will, which will invoke the method that I have deployed on the lambda. So it started 8085. Okay, so sub, uh, this is the method that I'm going to execute this is the uh, uh, my parameter that I'm going to pass as a JSON object person object so let me create it this I'm created this is the ID and the last it is 0 to 3 so let's uh, let's check the database 
right now there is no data let me refresh it yes two three this is the key record is generated all right so uh, now i have to check whether my lambda function has been invoked or not right i will go in the monitoring vlogs and cloudwatch you can see this event has been generated just now so let me open it so you can view this as a text lambda is invoked right this is the log that i have written here right so we can see that i have if i am inserting any record in the database one event is getting generated and that event is invoking the lambda function and lambda function is doing its job so this is how uh, we have done this so i hope uh, you guys have understood like uh, how this flow is going on thanks thank you for watching this and it's a learning process so whatever i've learned i have shared with you and we'll discuss this when we'll meet thank you